So today we have a review of G.K. Chesterton's famous and popular essay on running after one's hat. G.K. Chesterton he was born in 1874 and died in 1936. So he was active during the last quarter of the 19th century and the first quarter of the 20th century. Uh, he is uh, fondly called the Prince of the Paradox. G.K. Chesterton is known as the Prince of Paradox. Uh, Robert Graves, the famous English poet, called him the the elephantine paradox, the elephantine, because he was a huge mammoth uh, size, uh, very uh, heavy, robust man, elephantine paradox. So his intelligence and uh, his academic uh, intellectual activities was as huge and as mammoth as his own physical uh, size, an elephantine uh, paradoxist. Uh, a paradox, you know, it's a statement. A what is a paradox? The, the question. A paradox is a, a, a statement that is self-contradictory. That is, you know, two ideas uh, opposed to each other. Self-contradictory ideas uh, or absurd. But in reality, uh, they exp it, it expresses a possible truth. So, a self-contradictory statement which in reality finally in the final analysis expresses a possible truth for example here is a, a, a famous example given by socrates uh, i know one thing what that i know nothing so i know one thing i know nothing that is self-contradictory but that's a truth this a, a, a famous example of a paradox now an introduction uh, to a brief introduction to the life of uh, Chesterton. Chesterton's writings display wit and uh, sense of humor. These are the you know, two characteristic features of his essays. Um, number one, witty. Number two, humorous. He employs paradox, the self-contradictory, the self-contradictory statement, which uh, you know uh, reveals a truth. Paradox, while making serious comments on the world. On the world means all government, politics, philosophy theology and many many other topics he has he has you know discussed uh, topics and subjects you know on all the topics and on almost all the subjects under the sun that a man can think of he is seen at his happiest in his essays like on running after one's hat on running after one's hat that looks like a, a very trivial silly subject on running after one's hat but you know we can see that he makes very interesting observations. The essay on running after one's hat is a typical example of Chesterton's style of writing with its paradox, fun and wit. Chesterton is a versatile writer and a prolific writer. Versatile means he talks about various topics. Prolific, he has produced you know, a, a, a large quantity of writings. The scope of his interest uh, embraced almost every aspect of contemporary life. As we usually say, you know, he talks about every subject under the sun. For 35 years, he regularly wrote informal essays within the space limitations of a newspaper column. A newspaper column because he was a columnist. He contributed, uh, he contributed essays, that is columns. He wrote columns. Uh, to a famous newspaper which is daily news published from london and also the famous magazine the illustrated uh, london news he contributed to uh, daily news as well as the illustrated london news for about 35 years 35 long years uh, continuously with its paradox fun and wit chesterton is a versatile and prolific writer the scope of his interest embraced almost every aspect of contemporary life for 35 years, he regularly wrote informal essays within the space of limitations of a newspaper column. His informal essays provide a comprehensive presentation of views. Now, about coming to the essay on running after one's hat, uh, a synopsis, part one. Chesterton feels envious because 
he he begins the essay like this he was away he was away from his village he was away on the on the on the on the on the countryside then what happened there was a sudden flood a sudden flood in battersea and he says well flood is usually you know it it, it is it's, it, it causes a lot of trouble if there is a if there is a flood a sudden flood well it puts people in trouble but he says oh i lost one of the greatest opportunities i missed the opportunity of enjoying enjoying the beauty of a flooded area this is how this is the paradox so chesterton feels envious on hearing that london has been flooded he feels envious he is jealous his own native town battersea which is a meeting point of waters is flooded as well so battersea is flooded london is also flooded the boatman because you know uh, it it was it, it was it was it was under waters the entire place was flooded and uh, it was submerged under water so people could not walk people could not travel so there were boats you know uh, people you know that is you know sellers the boatmen used to bring things to uh, houses vegetables and other other stuff the boatmen who brought meat from the butcher and the green grocer the vegetable seller who bought vegetables to the corner they he says they must have enjoyed the experience of rippling silver water oh it must have been a very very beautiful sight i missed the opportunity i missed the chance of enjoying the beauty of the place this is the paradox part 2 paragraph number 2 such romantic views of flood or fire so flood or is something some trouble flood causes trouble fire causes trouble but as far as he is concerned to him it is an opportunity for enjoyment it's a romantic view a romantic view of flood or fire he says this romantic view my opinion my romantic view or opinion about flood and fire it is as good as as sensible as the natural responses of ordinary people to ordinary people fire you know is it is it, it is a nuisance flood is a nuisance but to him it is something romantic it is as sensible as their uh, views their reactions most of the inconveniences that make men swear or women cry if there are any inconvenience inconveniences in life we become angry men become angry and women cry but he says these responses this anger and the sadness it is sentimental it is your mind as milton says mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell and a hell of heaven so a heaven can be made into a hell and a hell can be made into a heaven it is all it depends on your mother mind is its own place so it is sentimental or imaginative for example the inconvenience of having to wait for a train for example you go to the railway station you want to catch a train but the train is late or you become you know unhappy you become frustrated you become uh, you become angry you don't like it but he says the inconvenience of having to wait for a train inside the railway station is meaningless it is not inconvenience for example you put a small boy a small boy in such a situation a small boy in such a situation would make the railway station a palace of poetical pleasures now a boy is not bothered about whether the train is late or early or your own time he doesn't bother he just you know enjoys himself chesterton is of the little boy's habit he says i have the mindset of that boy he has spent chesterton has spent many of his rich hours in a meditative mood at uh, that famous clapham junction railway station near london it all depends on all this depends on upon the emotional point of view as i said earlier as milton said mind mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell and a hell of hell paragraph number 3 chesterton disagrees with the view he doesn't agree with the view that running after one's hat is unpleasant is it unpleasant to run after a hat to to to, to run after your if if your uh, if your hat for example is flown away by wind now you run after it is it not good is it unpleasant he says 
the same people run after run much faster in games and sports then why do people run after small cricket balls why do people run after you know footballs he says the same people the same people who say that it is unpleasant to run after a hat the same people they run much faster in games and sports they run after balls if it is humiliating to run after one's hat do you do you think it is humiliating if it is humiliating then it is comic then man is a comic creature because everything that a person does is comic you eat food isn't it comic you make love isn't it comic so eating and making love are equally comic running after sometimes you run after your wife and running after a wife is more comic isn't it if running after a person's hat is comic then running after a wife running after a girl is more comic than running after a hat paragraph number 4 a man could run after his hat with the greatest passion and joy like pursuing a wild animal sometimes you run after elephants sometimes you run after lions wild animals now you can you can run after a hat with the same passion with the same passion as you pursue a wild animal chesterton believes that soon he he hopes he believes that soon uh, hat hunting that is running after hat will become a sport of the upper classes like cricket or 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 or, or football then it would be combined with the humanitarianism well you should respect the human values when you, when you when you when you make it into when you when you when you make this uh, past time this thing that is running after a hat when when you make it into a game you should combine it with uh, mix it with some sort of humanitarianism you should respect the values the hunters would feel the hat hunters would feel that they were giving genuine pleasure to the viewers not a sadistic pleasures and paragraph number 5 people get annoyed people feel that you know it is it's it's a trouble you don't like it you become uncomfortable get annoyed while facing inconvenience of taking a fly out of a glass of milk if a fly falls into your tea or glass of milk you you get disturbed you get troubled you get annoyed or sometimes you know when you if you want to if you want to drink wine if the cork if the cap of the bottle falls into uh, the the glass of wine well you you don't like it you become unhappy but the best way people can make such inconvenience an opportunity for exciting amusement you can you can turn it into an opportunity a chance for amusement is to imagine that they are doing something positive when you take uh, out when you take when you try to take out a fly out of the tea or milk where you do it they, they, you you think for yourself that you, you are doing something very very positive the sense of wrong whether something is right or wrong it is subjective it depends on your mind and it is relative patience and imagination these two things these two great qualities number one you should have patience number two you should have imagination so a patient and imaginative mind will solve such problems in this way so in this way as we said earlier the mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell a hell of heaven as you know uh, john milton said in this way so if you have a, an, an emotional point of view a, a positive uh, mindset the floods in london and battersea may be accepted it becomes something good it becomes something positive and it can be enjoyed poetically an adventure now what is an adventure he tries to define an adventure an adventure is only an inconvenience rightly considered so it is an inconvenience Go, going into a forest for example it's an inconvenience but you consider it rightly you look at it in the right manner in the right perspective it becomes an adventure and an inconvenience what is an inconvenience and an inconvenience is only an adventure wrongly considered so this is the synopsis of the essay we will try to discuss the short answer questions first question what makes the landscape of battersea that is his uh, his his own town that is dick chesterton's uh, native place battersea which is chesterton's own romantic town something quite incomparable something which cannot be you know something unique incomparable something unique what makes it incomparable 
Battersea is famous as a meeting place of waters. It is a popular place. It's a famous place. Famous for its waters. It's already a meeting place of different rivers. But now, the, the place has the additional attraction of great sheets of water by flood. So already it's a meeting place of waters. Now it is flooded. So there's additional additional water. This is what makes the landscape of Battersea something quite incomparable. Oh, he says, I missed it. It must have been brilliant. It must have been very, very exuberant, exciting. I missed it, he says, because it's the, 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 there is already it's already a meeting meeting place of waters. Now there is additional sheets of water caused by the flood. It's something uh, something exciting. Paragraph, question number two: Why the small boys do not complain of being trapped in a railway station? Small boys trapped inside railway stations due to delayed trains would make most of the situation. They are not not bothered. If a train happens to be late, little children, they don't bother. They enjoy most of the situation. They they try to they try to do this. They get a lot of time to play. They they get additional time for enjoyment. To them, a railway station is a cavern of wonder or a palace of poetical pleasures. To the little boys, to them, the red light and the green light. On the signal are like the new sun under the new moon. They, they, they start enjoying the time. Question number three. They also serve who only stand and wait for 2.15. Explain. That's a, that's a famous, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a modification of that famous line. They, Milton's on his blindness. They also serve who only stand and wait. They also serve who only stand and wait on his blindness. That famous sonnet. On his blindness, they all. That's the last, last line of the sonnet. They also serve only stand and wait for 2:15. For the 2:15 is the train. They also serve. If you go there, for example, to catch the 2:15 train, and you find that uh, you know the train is late, so you become unhappy. But what about the children? They make it a cavern of wonder or a palace of poetic pleasures. They enjoy the time. So they also serve only stand and wait for the 2:15. Chesterton says that the ordinary people normally get upset about the delayed 215 train. Whereas small boys would make most of the situation. They would make the railway station a cavern of wonder or a palace of poetical pleasures. They also serve who only stand and wait for the 215. Uh, even for, for ordinary people like you and me. It is, you know, you, you, we, you don't like it. You become unhappy. But for the children, oh, it's a cavern of wonder. They make the most of the, they, they make most of the time. They make it an excellent time for, you know, for, to play games, to, to enjoy themselves. What does Chesterton say about the typical nuisance of daily life? What is his ideas? What is the observation that Chesterton makes about the typical nuisance the little troubles of daily life. He says, as regards the nuisances, annoyances of daily life, it depends on, everything depends upon the emotional point of view. It depends upon your, your mind. It depends upon how you look at it. It depends upon your attitude. What does Chesterton say about the current impression that it is unpleasant to have to run after one's hat? What does he say? Is it unpleasant to run after a person's hat? Is it unpleasant? Chesterton disagrees with the view that running after one's hat is unpleasant. He doesn't like it. He doesn't agree to it. He says that the same people run much faster in games and sports. Now, if you don't like it, then you run, you, you, are, you like running after uh, balls, for example, footballs and cricket balls, in games and sports, you run. For a 100 meters race, you run. Isn't it unpleasant? If it is humiliating to run after one's hat, then it is comic. Then he goes on to say, well, it is the life itself is comic. Then man is a comic figure. Question number six. Hat hunting will, in the fullest degree, combine sport with the humanitarianism. Explain. Hat hunters 
people who run after hat would feel that they were not inflicting pain you have to be when you run after hats you don't inflict pain don't uh, harm the the hats it should be combined with the humanity you should respect the human values the hunters hat hunters would feel peace and grace that they would give genuine pleasure to the crowd they should ensure that they, they are they are giving they are rendering a genuine a pleasure to uh, the the people who are watching in the game question number seven what is Chesterton's philosophy about the inconveniences of daily life he says people can make inconvenience if it's an in for example there's an inconvenience you can make it an opportunity for exciting amusement how by changing your mind mindset instead of getting annoyed they should imagine that they are doing something positive the sense of wrong is subjective and relative patience and imagination will solve such problems question number eight how is it possible to accept the floods in london and enjoy it poetically if there is if your place is flooded can you enjoy it can you accept it well taken in the right spirit if you look at it in the right spirit the floods in london may be accepted and enjoyed poetically take it in the right spirit what is an adventure he says an adventure is only an inconvenience rightly considered an inconvenience rightly considered is an adventure and what is an inconvenience an inconvenience is an adventure wrongly considered so this is this is his philosophy paragraph questions question number one Chesterton's description of the Battersea Chesterton says that he felt a savage envy oh he felt really jealous a savage envy on hearing that London was flooded in his absence Battersea the place his native place was already the most beautiful of human localities a meeting point of the waters now the Battersea has the additional gift of great sheets of flood water already there is water but now there is flood so additional sheet, gift of great sheets of flood water the landscape must be very very romantic now like a vision of venice oh it must be it must be like venice because already there is water now there is flood the ordinary boatmen bringing meat and vegetables to the corners must have enjoyed though that rowing in the in the rippling silver you know of the of, of the flood water well they he must have the boatmen must have enjoyed and i missed it there is nothing so perfectly poetical as an island when a district is flooded when a district is flooded flooded well it becomes an archipelago a group of islands like election dweeb question number two what is the philosophical position taken by chesterton about the typical nuisance of daily life what is the philosophical position for example you know uh, if a if a if a fly falls into your hot tea your glass of milk a cork falls into uh, for example the glass of wine now what is his position what does what does chesterton say about that chesterton feels envious on hearing that london was flooded because he was away in the countryside he lost them he missed the opportunity people who went out in boats the boatmen bringing meat and vegetables must have enjoyed the experience of rippling silver water such romantic views of flood are as sensible as the natural responses of the ordinary people ordinary people don't like it but you take a different perspective you like it both are same most of the inconveniences that make men angry or women cry are sentimental the response your frustration is you know sentimental or it is it, it, it is it is your mind for example the inconvenience of having to wait for train inside a railway station it is meaningless a small boy in such a situation would make uh, uh, the railway station a palace of poetical pleasures Chesterton is of the little boy's habit he says I have the little boy's mindset it all depends upon the emotional point of view that is your attitude in what context does Chesterton say that a man running after a hat is not 
half so ridiculous as a man running after a wife. A man running after a wife is more ridiculous than a man running after a hat. Why? Chesterton disagrees with the view that running after one's hat is unpleasant. He says that the same people run much faster in games and sports. If it is humiliating to run after a hat, then it is comic. Then he says, man is a comic creature. Most of the things that he does, most of the things that the man does, such as, for example, eating and making love, are equally comic. Oh, and the most, the most comic things of life are exactly the things that are most worth doing. For example, making love. Isn't it comic? But people love it. it is, you feel that it is worth doing. But that is comic. In this context, Chesterton says that a man running after a hat is not half so ridiculous as a man running after a wife. Paragraph question number four. Why does Chesterton say that hat hunting will be the sport of the upper classes in future? Well, uh, you know, the, the time is it, is, it is not far when this hat hunting uh, is going to become one of the one of the most favorite of the sports Chesterton does not agree that running after one's hat is unpleasant it is not it is not a, you know unpleasant running after after a person's hat well it's okay it's all right it's something good a man could run after his hat with the great passion and joy like pursuing like running after a wild animal Chesterton believes that soon hat hunting will become a sport of the upper classes there will be a meet of the ladies and gentlemen ladies and gentlemen will come together on some high ground on a windy morning and they will be told that the professional attendants have started a hat hunt on the ground the announcements will be made hunters would feel that they were not inflicting pain now you should be ensure that you know, pain is not inflicted then it should be combined with humanitarianism the hunters would feel peace and grace that they would give genuine pleasure to the crowd. They ensure that they provide genuine pleasure to the crowd. Now, what is the theme of Chesterton's essay? On running after one's hat, Chesterton talks about the inconvenience of life and the right attitude which one has to develop towards them. He talks about the flood that hit London and Battersea. Battersea, his own romantic town, when he was away in the countryside, he says that he was envious about the opportunity that he's lost, he lost to enjoy the beauty of the place and water. He feels that the flood would have doubled the beauty of Battersea. Oh, it's already a beautiful place, but now it has just become more beautiful and made it look like Venice. Inconveniences taken in the right spirit will turn into an exciting adventure. Inconvenience is just an adventure wrongly considered by the most unimaginative person. So it is our fault. Now here is an essay. How far does G.K. Chesterton succeed in developing a delightful and philosophical essay from an ordinary, unimportant, down-to-earth, unimportant context in, this, in his essay on running after one's hat? It's an ordinary incident running after a hat but he 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 develops a very very delightful essay a philosophical essay you know he 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 formulates some philosophical ideas from this ordinary incident how does he do that the essay as i said in is in five paragraphs here is the introduction in on running after one's hat Chesterton develops a delightful and philosophical essay from an ordinary, unimportant situation. This is from the, the question. He attempts to give a positive attitude towards life's small troubles, offering a look on the bright, bright side argument. Look on the bright side. So a thing has two sides, bright side, the dark side. So his, his position is look on the bright side argument. He says, inconveniences the you know little inconvenience of daily life taken in the right spirit can turn into exciting adventures paragraph number two Chesterton feels envious 
on hearing that London and Battersea are flooded. The ordinary boatman must have enjoyed the experience of the rippling silver water. Such romantic views of life, such romantic views of flood or fire are as sensible as the natural responses of ordinary people to the contrary. Most of the inconveniences of daily life are sentimental or imaginative. Well, why something becomes inconvenience? Because it is your mind, sentimental or imaginative. For example, the inconvenience of having to wait for a train inside a railway station, it is meaningless. A small boy would enjoy, would, 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 would enjoy himself. A small boy in such a position, such a situation, would make the railway station a palace of poetical pleasures. It all depends upon the emotional point of view. Paragraph number three. Chesterton disagrees with the view that running after one's hat is unpleasant. Is it unpleasant to run after a hat? If it is humiliating, run, if running after one's hat is humiliating, then it is comic. Then he says, man is a comic creature then. Eating and making, eat, eating and making love are equally comic. Running after a wife is more comic than running after a hat. A man could run after his hat with the greatest passion, like pursuing, like following, running after a wild animal. Chesterton believes that soon hat hunting will become a sport of the upper classes. But then it should be combined with the humanitarianism. Well, you should respect human values in the sports. The hunters would feel that they were giving genuine pleasure to the viewers. Paragraph number four. People get annoyed while facing little inconveniences such as taking a fly out of a glass of milk or taking a cork out of a glass of wine. People can make inconvenience into an opportunity for exciting amusement. They should imagine that they are doing something positive. Just think that you are doing them something positive. The sense of wrong, when you, when you feel, when you think that something is wrong, well, it is, it is subjective and relative. Patience and imagination will solve such problems. In this way, the floods in London might be accepted and enjoyed poetically. Now, with the right mindset, you will be able to accept the, 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 the flood of London as well as Battersea. You can enjoy it poetically. An adventure is only an inconvenience rightly considered. An inconvenience is only an adventure wrongly considered. And here is the last concluding paragraph. Well, in running after one's hat, Chesterton puts a trivial subject, a silly subject, an insignificant subject into in a theoretical framework. He advocates a right approach, the right attitude towards little inconvenience of life taken in the right spirit. If you take it in the right spirit, well, a boring railway station can turn into a cavern of wonder. And that is the end of the lesson, the review of the, of the lesson of the essay on running after one's hat. Thank you very much.